Yeah, hi people, it's me again, obviously, you want to know where you can work as always. Uh, yeah, as always, as the Heather gives away, um, this um, video is going to be about how a spell works at a basic level. Um, now, all, if not most occultists in the world are familiar, at least most that practice um, anything akin to Western magic, anything along those lines, are familiar with the abbreviated phrases LBRP and the BRH. Uh, the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram and the uh, Banishing Ritual of the Hexagram. Uh, these rituals are like a staple, they're like the most cookie cutter thing that you'll come across in uh, especially Western occultism. Although it uh, has been adapted and modified here and there up to minor extents, um, but the basic premise is the same. Uh, now, like I said, I'm simply going to dissect and explain to people in a straightforward and mundane manner the way I usually do, always or usually do, to the point where even a dunce, so to speak, can uh, understand it. Um, now, what gives a spell effect, essentially, is, generally speaking, three things. The, the spell at a basic level, so the physical action, um, associated with the spell, uh, I'll explain in a second, but just at a base level, the one, the physical action associated with the spell, secondly, the most important thing, intent, and also very important is uh, charged power, so those are the things that you need to remember. Now, point one, um, by physical action, I mean, for example, writing something down you know, what most spells look like, it's a citation. It's essentially something written on a piece of paper that you're supposed to say. Um, that's what I mean by physical action. It doesn't have to be something written on a piece of paper. It could be any series of actions. Something as simple as doing this, moving your hand up and down, stretching it out and then retracting it is also a physical action. Again, this is just an example. Obviously, uh, most spells do not have anything of such a nature because it's too mundane in nature itself. Doing this with your hand is nothing special. Usually your spells, um, especially the most elaborate spells are just that, they're elaborate. They consist of elaborate movements, um, uh, elaborate phrases that need to be uttered. Those are generally speaking what spells, that's what generally speaking spells look like. So that's what I mean by physical action. Um, that's point one. Point two, um, the intent. This is the most important thing. I have an article that you can find linked in the description uh, as well as any other things that might be of interest or things relating to this subject uh, as a whole linked in the description the way I usually do, always or usual. Um, intent. I have an article called It's All About Intent and the header speaks for itself. I'm not going to elaborate on that article. The header is already enough in terms of what it gives away and what it's all about. Um, the article, um, again, the header speaks for itself. It's all about intent. It's all about intent. I repeat, it's all about intent. Your intentions are the most important thing. When you, uh, anything that, intent is a fundamental component of a spell and it is the, you can, I, you can say arguably, but arguably only up to a minor extent. You can, it's safe to say that it is the most important component of a spell. Um, your level of concentration and your focused intent is what, um, by intent obviously I mean you being fixated on what you want um, and the desire that comes along with it uh, is uh, of, of, of paramount importance. It's simply, its importance can't be understated. Uh, now, don't get this confused with ritual workings as in you work with the spirit. I'm not going to uh, elaborate on that. Maybe I might in a separate video, but for now, let's just stick to basic spells, okay? So essentially the most common cookie cutter spell, the average spell, something written on a piece of paper and that's it. Intent. So again, it's all about intent. How concentrated you are, how focused and fixated you are on, your, you are on what you want. And uh, last but not least, part three. No, I'm sorry, let me see. What was part three again? Part three was, um, point one was physical action, point two was intent, and uh, part three was about um, 
You'll have to excuse me, okay? My mind is a bit all over the place, so yeah, I'm like that. Uh, I almost forgot. I, I'm in danger of forgetting what I said. What did I say again? What's part three again? Physical action, mm -hmm. intent, and um, and what was the other thing again? Hold on. Yeah, I briefly had to check to see what the third thing was. Charged power, yeah, charged power. I repeat, charged power. Again, apologies for that. Look at that, man. Uh, I simply briefly um, edited the previous video. Not edited, as edited as immersed it with this one. In any case, let's continue the subject. Yeah, charged power. See what I mean? I record my videos live. It's like thing. No, no editing or anything like that of a major level. At a major level, no, no, no. Everything is purely live and unscripted. Charge power. Charge power is um, charge power simply stands for also very important. Like I said, simply stands for how powerful the spell is based on prior use, based on collective energy. The reason that, for example, the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram and the banishing ritual of the hexagram and anything else of such a nature is popular is because it has been charged due to prior use. We're talking about collective energy. Since the spell was introduced or these um, spells or rituals were introduced, introduced into the occult, global occult community, then we're talking about thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people even perhaps. Either way, a lot of people since then have, uh, since it came into existence, have performed this ritual and up to present day, people still do. A good deal of people around the world still perform these rituals, so you can imagine. All of that is collective energy. You're essentially, that spell is empowered in itself. That ritual ha is empowered in itself so based on collective energy. We're talking about a ritual that hundreds of thousands or millions of people even, since that ritual has existed, have practiced and they carry it out regularly. So whenever you do this ritual or perform this ritual, this ritual almost has like little bits of energy worth a million people uh, attached to it. Not literally, but my point is based on the energetic influx and outflux, um, again, in its turn, based on collective energy, all of this has just been, I mean, all of this has just been, um, whenever you carry out this ritual, you're, you essentially have the backing of, of, again, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, and that's what makes it so effective. That's how any spell works at a base level. If I were to, for example, write out, just create a spell out of nowhere, not a ritual, a spell. You can call it a ritual, spell, ritual, whatever. In any case, I carry out a spell or a ritual. I write down, for example, I wish to become wealthy. I call upon all the forces in the universe, both good and bad, uh, big and small or great and small, um, to aid me in my desire for wealth. I wish to be a millionaire. It's just an example. Mind you, it's just an example. I wish to be a millionaire. Um, please make me a millionaire. Um, uh, let's see, what else can I say? In exchange, I will, for example, leave out one meal a day on my dinner table at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, my time or whatever time I am capable of making that happen. I will place this piece of paper on which all of this is written. I will place a copy of it on um, uh, underneath the, the, the dish in, in question. Yeah, that's essentially how a spell works. Now, what makes this spell successful? This is not a, a known spell. I'm the only one that knows it because I wrote it. Simple example. What will make this spell effective? Because the spell doesn't have charge power to it. I will have to charge it through repeated use and that can only happen over time. I have to keep doing this spell for like a year. It just goes on. Not even a year, but in the long term, at the very least a year. Okay, or at the very least until I have accomplished my objective and I'm a millionaire. See what I mean? That is charged power. Um, so with customized spells, um, these spells aren't mainstream within an occult context, so they're not known to, they're not known to people, they're only known to you and anyone whom you share it with, and even the people you share it with are unlikely to actually perform this ritual, 
because most people will opt for a, a mainstream ritual, mainstream in a relative of so-called context or within a relative context. Um, so what makes what will make this spell um, effective to the max is one, like I said, uh, the mechanics of the spell. By writing down something on a piece of paper and reciting it, you're stating your intentions and you're stating your intentions in a specific manner. What you wrote down emphasizes your intent. You're calling upon the forces of the universe, good and bad, big and small, blah, 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 blah. blah. And you're essentially asking for an energetic exchange. You want A and you give B in exchange other than, other than just asking or demanding or commanding or anything else in between and or anything else in between or both um, or all of it um, in exchange for your desire. That's it. And again, the most, just like I said earlier, the most fundamental component, the most important thing is going to be your intent. This is how witchcraft works at a basic level, your intent. Now, your level of concentration and your level of focus will determine how successful the ritual is. If you just, or that spell is, if you just write on a piece of paper, okay, I want to become a millionaire, and this is how you decide it. Okay, I call upon the forces, good and small, blah, blah, blah. I want to do this, I want to do that. I want it, I want it, I want it. Okay, in exchange, I'll leave out some food. It's not going to be effective, not even remotely. Okay, if your ritual is effective, then you better believe that it's definitely not for, for effort. It's definitely not due to your efforts. Nope. It's purely due to, due to other miscellaneous factors that do not have anything to do, that have little to nothing to do with, with your ritual at a base level. Okay. This is how what a, what a ritual looks like. Deconstructed, dismantled, and reconstructed. Um, mounted. Um, but if you seriously want a highest a high success rate, then you need to seriously be focused. You need to mean what you say. What you wrote down, it's not about the physical words, it's about your intent. These words represent your intent. When someone tells you, I'm angry, what they have is intent. It's not about what they're saying. It's about their intent, their energy essentially reflected. I am angry. It indicates their intent. It has nothing to do with their tone of voice, etc. Although a tone of voice is commonplace um, because it essentially, the intent goes along with the emotion. And emotion anger is generally speaking manifested with intensity. Someone can also say, make no mistake, I'm very angry right now. And the intent is still the same. The person is very angry. The person is very upset, but it doesn't have to go along with the heavy handed, with the stereotypical um, physical manifestations or trademarks um, or characteristics of the emotion, anger itself. It's simply an example. Someone can be sad, but they don't have to be sad in the way of, um, they don't have to be sad in the way of, to the point where they're going to cry. No. Or to the point where they're going to be melancholic. No. But generally speaking, that is the case. When people are angry, they showcase the typical angry voice. You can hear anger in their voice. You can hear them being intense. When someone is sad, the, the opposite. You can hear them being sad. It's like they're in a weakened state of mind. It just goes on. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. But um, you need to seriously mean what you say. So within given example, or within the context of given example, I would simply, for example, recite this once a day or once a week, you name it. I determine what I want to do. Um, for example, I recite it twice a day. I'm simply saying, okay, I'm going to do it in the morning or three times a day, in the afternoon and in the evening. And when I write it down, I simply state my intent. I call upon the forces in the universe, both big and small or great and small, both good and bad. I want to become a millionaire. You need to mean what you say. What you're saying is essentially your intent. And when you do so, you need to be fully concentrated, not thinking about, oh, I need to take out the dog or I need to, I need to go to the store and pick up some things. I'm out of toilet paper. I'm out of this. I'm out of that. No, 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 no. Even if you have something important on your mind, as in my wife is, my husband or wife is deathly ill. They can die at any moment. No. You need to literally set everything aside, literally. 
no interruptions, no disruptions, nothing but pure concentrated focus on what you want. On that is your intent. Your intent will be maximized energetically, spiritually speaking, through like a laser beam. It's like comparing a laser beam compared to the scatter shot that a shotgun releases. Boom. It just scatters all over the place. It's not highly concentrated. Whereas when you're fully concentrated, you're focused specifically on carrying out this ritual, then you're going to, um, it's going to, it's the equivalent of the spiritual equivalent of a laser beam. That's how you do things. You're fully focused, boom, etc. You state your intent, you mean everything you say. It comes from the heart. It's genuine. It's not just la 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 la. You don't mean what you say. There is no intent behind what you're saying. Your intent needs to be maximized by default, the way I explained, and through concentrated focus. And that's it. Once you've done all of that, once you can do all of that, then it's not an issue. And you'll see that the, your spell or ritual has a much higher chance of success. And the beauty of stuff like this usually is that you don't need magical proficiency. You don't need to be experienced as an occultist or you don't even need to be an occultist. The average person can literally do what I said. You write down on a piece of paper what you want as in, okay, I want this, I want this, and this, and this, and you phrase it in a way as in you're addressing someone. Just in a most generic of ways, literally just like I explained, I call upon the universe. I, I want love to be brought into my life. I want this, I want that, I want wealth. I want all my problems to be solved. Uh, you don't have to even like make like a peace offering or anything like that. Okay, I beseech you at the same time, I command you by my own strength. Uh, I'm saying by my own strength because, you know, assuming that I'm not gonna say by God's almighty will as is everything. I can, but um, I don't want a religious context, a specific religious context um, attached to this whole, um, to this subject as a whole. So that's why I'm simply saying by your own strength, okay? You're simply asking on your own behalf. I want this. Please bring it to me. And yeah, that's essentially it. And any person could do this and results, you'll get results definitely, uh, generally speaking. If you don't get results, then it's due to miscellaneous factors that um, someone that does not practice that the average person or a beginner can do little to nothing about. But yeah, at a base level, this is what a spell or this is what a ritual looks like. It's very simplistic, etc. The things that make it work, like I already said, is charged power. But for a customized spell or ritual, something that you wrote down yourself, you don't have that benefit. All the more need to compensate for it through maximizing your intent. The only two things you essentially need, okay, charged power as, as much as it helps because it's a tremendous help. If you can, if you don't have it at your disposal, then there's nothing you can do about it, period. You can't um, have charge power on a spell or ritual that you yourself wrote because no one knows about it other than you. Um, and obviously the spirits and entities that are always around you and they can see you right and everything. <laughs> in a matter of speaking, both literally and in a matter of speaking. The two things you need are simply, again, the basic mechanics, you understand the basic mechanics of it as in you write it down on a piece of paper, pa 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 blah, 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 blah. Your intent, you simply, through physical action, emphasize your intent. And usually when people want something stated, they write it down. Correspondence of any kind, stationary of any kind, is literally. A company says that they're going to fire you, they send you a letter because you're not, they're not able to be physically, you're not able to be physically present or they don't want you physically present at their office or anything like that. What do they do? They send you correspondence, whether it's digitally or physically, point in cases, they're stating their intent towards you. Then putting their official logo and everything indicates how serious it is as in, hey, we're hereby telling you, they're stating their intent towards you as in, hey, we're done with you, we've separate ties, goodbye. Period. See, they're stating their intent and they do it through physical action. The physical action in question being a letter, being stationary or a message that they sent towards you. Something as simple as a text message also states intent. If someone sends me, you a text message, uh, for example, you had an appointment with someone and someone sends you a text message, where the fuck are you? Then yeah, the intent is clear. The person, based on what they're saying, again, the words that they're using and the fact that they're sending you a message is their intent um, 
their intent emphasized through physical action towards you. The, 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 what the fuck, where are you, or where the fuck are you, emphasizes that they are at the very least agitated and it emphasizes that in their eyes, you did something wrong. Those are things that you can immediately deduct. See what I mean? The intent is clear. You can come to the conclusion that A, the person is not happy, and B, the person is not happy due to me not living up to um, some part of the agreement. And the part of the agreement in question, the, the proverbial part of the agreement in question is um, you most likely not having showed up on time or um, you coming to a different uh, agreement regarding time periods as in, in relation to your appointment. You had a date or an appointment scheduled with the person. And the person, someone missed, there was a misunderstanding of some sort regarding communication or anything along those lines. Point is, bluntly put, the person is pissed as hell and you apparently are late for an appointment that they had and that they expected you to be on time for, period. See, their intent, their intent is stated. When you write something down, you're like, okay, this literally has to manifest what you want, okay? And you need to understand that you can't just do it out of nowhere. That's not how a spell or a ritual works. As a creature in the universe, you're reliant upon all the forces in the universe, more or less. In a matter of speaking, from a human mundane perspective, you're reliant on the forces in the universe. That's why you're calling upon the forces of the universe. You're essentially saying to the world, hey, I'm asking you and at the same time telling you, all in one hit and everything else in between, I want this. Please get me this. Get me this. I command it in my name. Okay, by my own strength and by my own virtue and everything else that I have to offer. Get me this. I want it. Get me this, please. I want it. That's what you're saying. Um, and like I said, when you do that, see what I mean? Even this is charged power. The fact that you're doing it repeatedly is charged power because the power accumulates over time through repeated use. You keep repeating yourself and it's charged power. You're doing it every single day, etc., etc., etc. And you're like, okay, charged power, charged power. Um, but obviously not as compared to mainstream rituals like I already mentioned before. But my point is charged power is still charged power. You might not have like a million people metaphorically speaking backing you up through repeated use. But again, you still have your own energy to rely on. Either way, it is charged power um, and like I said the most important thing your intent your intent it's all about intent when you do your thing you're like okay I'm going to state my intent you do it day after day after day the same way that you brush your teeth day after day after day after day uh, another thing as a sideline is also commitment that you need to be aware of don't come up with petty excuses as in oh my god I need to do this today I didn't find time to do my spell oh I didn't no 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 you don't forget to take a shower, you don't forget to, um, to clean yourself up, you do not forget to brush your teeth, doesn't matter what happens. Metaphorically, the world itself could come to an end, and you're bluntly put, not going to forget to wipe your own ass after going to the bathroom. Now are you? Exactly. It's a way of life, okay? It's a fundamental part of who you are, and the same thing applies here. Your level of commitment also goes a long way, but if you're going to come up with excuses every single time that... Um, that you have a busy schedule or something unexpected in your life, whether it be of a personal nature or otherwise, um, shows up, then you're not going to, you're not going to think, you're not going to get very far because it, it has nothing to do with your intent. Your intent can be sky high, maximized, just everything can be in place, just the way I explained up to this point, I have explained. But you're not, again, okay, your level of commitment is low, you're not serious. You're, actions or your level of seriousness already gives away how serious you are about this which is not a lot if you keep coming up with excuses plain and simple that was simply a sideline anyways your intent okay i'm nearing the end of this video your intent is paramount like i said when you say okay i'm gonna do my thing okay just like maureen or ravenberg said okay i want this and this and that and that and that okay mm -hmm. okay let me see did i have everything okay i'm gonna do this like once a day i can I have enough time in my schedule. I'll do it at night before I go to sleep. Okay. Okay. Now, blah, 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 blah. When you do it, you need to be, like I said, focus. Nothing else matters. Literally nothing else matters. We're not, talking, not dead serious. Nothing else matters, period. See to it that you're not disturbed, etc. Nothing else matters. 
The only thing that matters is that you're focused on what you're doing. You're highly concentrated. Mm. And then you seriously state your intent. You mean it has to come from the heart, genuinely heartfelt. Like when you apologize to someone and it's heartfelt, you genuinely mean what you say and you're putting your full intent behind it. Intent equals concentrated energy. Energy coming from you. And you do the same thing. For example, you're ugly and you want to be good looking. You're like, I call upon all the forces in the universe. I beseech thee and at the same time I beg of you and at the same time I command you. Okay? By my own virtue, my own strength, my own God-given power and strength and whatnot. And everything else in between. I want to become good looking. I am not good looking by my own standards as well as factually. I wish to be good looking. Please make me good looking the way I desire to be. The way I desire to be both objectively as well as factually. Make me good looking the way that the world perceives good looks. Make me good looking. I am currently what? On a scale of 0 to 10 agree. I wish to be an 8. That's what your intent is supposed to be like, but as, in, as, as seriously as possible. Obviously, you're not supposed to overdo it and like yell, off the top, yell at the top of your lungs. No, that has nothing to do with intent. It has to be literally from the deepest part of you spiritually. I'm simply going to give you an example. Just one sentence. I beg of you and at the same time I command you. I am currently on a scale of 0 to 10 regarding uh, appearance. I am a 3. I'm ugly. Please. Make me good looking, I command you, by my own virtue, by my own God-given strength. Make me good looking. I wish to become attractive, beautiful and handsome. Make it so that it is the case. Make me good looking. Like genuinely, you need to truly, from the deepest part of your heart, so to speak, need to mean what you say. And you need to do that. Every single time, not like, oh, I'm not feeling it today, etc. Then if you're not going to feel it today you know, for some day, for whatever fucking reason, you're upset, you're this or that, then either clear your head beforehand or don't bother at all. But you need to do this the same way that you're not going to be, oh, okay, I had a bad day today. You know, I lived with my parents, mommy and daddy yelled at me or some crap like that. And I'm now, I'm, I broke up with someone, got them in such a bad mood. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so that means that when I go to the bathroom, I'm only gonna like, I'm not really gonna pay attention with wiping my ass. I'm just gonna like wipe twice and I'm done. Or I'm just going to brush my teeth like only like this and, and, and I'm done. Yeah, no, obviously not. Or I'm just going to, when I take a shower, I'm just gonna soap only my arms and I'm just gonna do this. Yeah, okay, I'm done, I'm not in a good mood. No, it, it's no, it's inexcusable and you know it. My point is, doesn't matter what happens. The world keeps turning. The world doesn't stop just for, so because you're in a bad mood. No, no, no. The world keeps turning consistently, regardless of what happens, regardless of what calamity or what joyfulness takes place in it. The world keeps turning. And most people, all if not most people know this, it doesn't matter what kind of horrible mood you're in. The base standard you set for yourself in terms of making yourself presentable is that you Brush your teeth adequately. Doesn't matter how bad of a mood you're in. You could be so angry that you could destroy something. You're still going to brush your teeth optimally. To the point where no dirt is going to be stuck in your teeth. You're still going to take a shower in an adequate fashion. As in cleaning your body properly. Yes. Doesn't matter what happens. It's the same thing. If you if you are of the opinion that you're in a bad mood. And you need like your head needs clearing. Then do that first. Just calm down. Relax. Clear your head. And literally just... Get rid of every clutter that possibly can be getting rid gotten rid of or have got that can be getting rid of, okay? That can be disposed of. End of story. You stay fully focused. Nothing else matters. The only thing that matters is that you decide your spell or your ritual and you do it the same way every single time to the best of your ability. Yeah, and that is all that's needed. And for the rest, you'll see for yourself. Of course, there is never any literal guarantee if... There are no results, you do this for a year, and there are no results, for example, then it's due to other miscellaneous factors. But at least you try it, and it's better than nothing. It doesn't take it. My point is, it's not supposed to take anything away from you. The same way that brushing your teeth doesn't take anything away from you. It adds to your, your life as a whole. And the same thing with this, even if it's only by principle. Um, and yeah, that's essentially it. Let me see if I have anything else to say. Any last words, so to speak. No, that's essentially just it. 
but you know that your chances for doing it from a mundane perspective, despite the fact that you're not a practitioner, you have little to no knowledge on the occult whatsoever, you don't know anything, you don't know squat, you can say to yourself, okay, I did my best at least. But like I said, the chances of nothing happening are very unlikely. The chances of nothing happening are very unlikely. It's highly unlikely that um, that nothing happens. As in, oh, nothing's going to happen. No, 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 no. It's highly unlikely. It just goes against logic. If you will notice something happening somewhere along the way, in the way of results, regardless of whether it's what you wanted or or what you didn't want. But you will definitely get the message that, hey, something is happening, even if it's only a dream or something. But again, generally speaking, you will get what you want. It might not be the exact way in which you wanted it or expected it, but beggars can be choosers. Okay, like I said, you're reliant on so many factors in the world. When you go to the supermarket, you can't find the exact same brand of um, toilet paper you're used to buying. What do you do? You may do it another brand. You bought toilet paper, the objective has been accomplished. It, should, it didn't literally happen the exact perfect way you envisioned it, but that's not the real world. If you think that, then you're delusional, no. For example, in my style, I wanna be good looking, and I notice all of a sudden that, um, what will happen realistically, for example, I'm, I, I pretend that I'm a regular person. I'm a so-called normal person, I'm not a sorcerer. I'm not me, you know, the legendary boy in a way, no, 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 no. I'm just the average guy, I'm like, okay. What will happen, I think, what I can expect is like, after a month or so, I can expect that, hey, realistically, as the average person, I can expect like a dream in which, in which I'm, I'm some kind of movie star, I look like Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise, so to speak. I look like someone that, by society standards, factually is good looking or handsome. And the dream is gonna be really vivid, like I'm like, oh wow, it's like I was actually, I was actually one of these guys. And then you wake up and you're like, oh, it's a dream, okay, yeah. No, that's because your own astral body, your spirit is hinting at you that, hey, what you're doing is working. And after like, for example, half a year, I, um, my eyes fall upon an article somewhere in a magazine. Didn't just want to, just me going about my daily life. I'm at the dentist or something. And all of a sudden I see like, like a thingy. I see a, I see a, I see contact information for a thingy, for a, a, a physical therapist, for example, that serves as a guide in terms of making you look better. Let's just say the ad is something along the lines of, do you want to realistically become more attractive? Okay, doctor something, 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 Dr. Maxwell, for example, uh, offers help in, in, in this aspect uh, at a very reasonable cost, blah, 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 blah. And it appeals to you for some reason. And it turns out you contact the guy, you go to him, and he actually gives you tips and stuff and whatnot. And he provides you, for example, realistic, non-harming, non-threatening, zero risk, zero risk in a matter of speaking, plastic surgery to make some minor enhancements. He gives you tips essentially, and at the end of it, you simply follow all of it. And at the end of it, you look twice as good as you used to look. To the point where you can't believe it. You're like, wow, I look so much better. People see me, people are like, people would see me like, wow, you look a lot better. Nah, no, you look great. You look, you look a lot better. Just like, yeah, exactly. You didn't live to see what I mean? Results. That's what you can expect on average to happen. Now, I'm not saying that I turned into a movie star, obviously, or I went to an eight. I was a three, like I said, and I went to like a five or a six. People say, wow, no, you look considerably better. You're just. It's the little things, you know, you're, you're, for example, you used to have like a, I don't know, your nose was somewhat crooked and now it's like very perfect, like very aligned with the rest of your face. Your hair is also nice looking. You, um, did you get a haircut or did you use some, are you using some kind of gel or something? Because that's what it looks like. In any case, it like optimizes your hair. Um, your posture, you used to walk around like, in a weird way for some reason. I can't really explain it. But now, Moreno, you look like nice and and straight. When you stand, I notice that you like, you used to have like kind of like a limp or you used to hunch over a little and now you're standing up straight. You're like really just like a pole. And when you walk, it's, I don't know, there's some kind of level of self-confidence in the way you walk. The way you used to walk is like insecure somewhat. 
That's what you can expect, okay? Those are realistic results, like, see, there you go. That's something that you can expect, essentially. And you see, you did it all on your own. That is what makes a spell work or a, a ritual work at a base level, literally from a mundane person's perspective. Someone that doesn't know jack shit about magic, occultism, the person asks, okay, listen, I'm not doubting this thing. Okay, 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 it works, but how does it work from a layman's perspective? There you go, this video. Bye-bye, until next time.